deluxe tuning made in Germany. At the heart of the Ruhr Valley, Brabus transforms Mercedes-Benz brand vehicles into driving powerhouses. The company's maxim, more displacement, more horsepower, more torque. So next we'll check and see if the car reaches its speed of 300 kilometers an hour. 900 horsepower, performance tuning at any cost. Of course, they will then have a car worth half a million or even possibly one million euros. The high-end tuners of the Ruhr Valley have been performing supreme precision work for more than 40 years. You can't be off by even one or two millimeters. New components are developed and manufactured in the workshop using state-of-the-art technology. Choice for the boys. In the engine department, fine-tuning is carried out on a nanoscale. You need to have a different level of know-how. The tuning premises in the city of Bottrop. New base vehicles are brought here every day. Step one is the quality inspection. The inspector examines the vehicles for paintwork damage, dents, and other damage that may have occurred during transit. If a vehicle is not impeccable, the quality inspector will investigate it immediately. For the tuning experts, it's a matter of the highest degree of precision, right from the very beginning. Before its high-end upgrade, like every new arrival, this Maybach is sent to the car wash. Dirt is taboo in the garages because the function of high-performance tuning parts may be compromised by impurities. After washing, it's taken inside the workshop. Around 6,500 vehicles are converted here every year on an area spanning 150,000 square meters. We have different levels of customization. If you come in the morning wanting to have a performance upgrade fitted, this will cost 1,590 euros plus VAT. A couple of hours later, you leave with an additional 20 or 30 horsepower. Or if you want a complete overhaul, on average, this will take three months or up to six months. Afterwards, you will have a vehicle that's worth half a million or even one million euros and up to 900 horsepower. Briefing in the Car Tuners Control Center. Team leaders and workshop managers meet here every morning. They discuss the production status of the orders. Around 150 wish lists are pinned to the wall. Car owners from all over the world place orders here to give their vehicles a special personality. Here we're creating a starry sky for our customers in a G63 Smart Ultimate, a full leather interior with a complete exterior remodeling. The vehicle's getting a performance boosting kit and a valve controlled exhaust. Some customers also just want 700 horsepower, speedometer, roof instruments, door sill panels, and a carbon bonnet. Full conversion. This customer doesn't want any chrome or silver details to be visible or any emblems or logos. This is the kind of range we work with. The customer's favorite model is the Brabus 800 Wide Star. For nearly four decades, the off-road vehicle has been continually fine-tuned in Bottrop. The 2.5-ton off-roader can now be upgraded to 900 horsepower. The Mercedes AMG G63 forms the base. Top speed of 220 kilometers per hour with a power rating of 585 horsepower and 850 newton meters torque. After undergoing its mutation in the Ruhr, a high powered car has 800 horsepower and 1000 newton meters torque. The XL off roader is then capable of breaking the 100 kilometer per hour mark in just 4.1 seconds. The transformation begins in Factory 1. In this configuration, the production vehicle already costs 150,000 euros. After the SUV leaves the works with a full conversion, it will be worth twice as much. A mechanic removes the standard exhaust system. It will be replaced with a chrome-plated sport exhaust. This does not make the SUV faster but the look and sound are intended to be as attention-grabbing as possible for the owner.
The difference is that the design and the sound are nicer. You have a button that says sport exhaust on it. You press it, then it's in sport mode. And it sounds really great. 30 minutes later, the valve controlled exhaust has been fitted and the car's value has increased by 7,000 euros. Time for a sound check. This is how the car sounds in normal mode. The new component shows what it can do at the mere touch of a button. The mechanic is satisfied. Toys for the boys. Throughout Europe, there are noise thresholds in effect for motor vehicles. Cars in this performance class may not exceed 75 decibels. This is as loud as a washing machine in a spin cycle. The tuners must comply with these rules too. There are, of course, regulations. If someone wants a car that is 200 decibels, we simply have to say it's not an option. This is not permitted anywhere. We simply would not do this kind of work. Or if somebody wants a three kilogram gold logo on their airbag, this has safety implications. In a crash, this would fly into your face. Obviously, we wouldn't do it. In the glass hall, in factory one, the fitters are replacing the original external paneling and aerodynamic parts they need to make way for the Wide Star kit, which will increase the value of the SUV by a five-figure amount. The hood consists of a carbon kit. This top piece, known as the Power Dome, is intended to provide the tuned engine with more room. Large air ducts in the newly installed front spoiler supply the unit with additional oxygen. Extended wings on the front and rear axle give the vehicle an even beefier look. A standard design of 23-inch light alloy rims and a new rear bumper give the off-roader a sporty appearance. The stainless steel exhaust with the throttle system provides the powerful sound. The mechanics are assembling the new wings. A full conversion kit consists of around 50 individual parts. These have all been painted before assembly. The employees attach the wings to the off-roader in a few simple steps. It's now 10 centimeters wider on either side, enough space for chunky tires. The new 23-inch wheels are already waiting in the warehouse next door. A colleague clamps the huge alloy wheels, machined from a single piece into an assembly machine. The sports tires will later have to keep the two and a half ton car on the road at speeds of up to 240 kilometers per hour. The casing, the central framework of the tire, and a special rubber compound ensure the necessary traction. Highly tuned vehicles always operate at their physical limits. The tire mechanic cannot afford to make a mistake when mounting them. The consequences would be disastrous. It could get dangerous then. I wouldn't like to be sitting in the car for tire bursts. The fact is our vehicles are indeed faster after all. The special material and the precision work come at a price. A set of super tires costs up to 17,000 euros. That's equivalent to a new small car. Up next, the balancing machine. On the road, the wheels have to rotate perfectly. The machine sensors measure the imbalance on the axle. The location is automatically displayed to the technician. The fitter offsets the slightest deviation by attaching weights to the rim. By the end of the day, the tire specialist has assembled around 50 wheels using this method. A fast car also needs powerful brakes, but the original red of the disc brake caliper does not appeal to everyone. The color can be changed at the customer's request. 
the fitters remount the resprayed brakes. A highly sensitive task. Error tolerance for the high-end tuners, 0.0. .0. Yeah, this is the most important component in a vehicle. No brakes means no way of stopping. And the customer could be killed. You cannot be off by one or two millimeters. It's truly precision work. The mechanic now painstakingly places the yellow disc brake caliper onto the brake disc. He takes his time at every step. Stress could increase the error rate. The difference between custom workshop and assembly line work is obvious here. Where I used to work, the jobs were all on tight schedules, slaving away nonstop. They would use a stopwatch to see if we could get the job done in the set time. What matters here, everything has to be top-notch, 100%. Everything needs to be as it should be. When tuning powerhouses such as these, it's not about time pressure, but about quality, precision, and safety. Back in the large glass hall, the front side of the SUV is up next. The mechanics manually assemble the new front spoiler. The employees modify four SUVs here every week, giving them the beast look. The customers want to stand out from the crowd. They're looking for a custom-made car, something their neighbors or work colleagues don't have. Here in Bottrop, a 450-strong staff meet the requirements of even the most demanding customers. Globally, 2,500 employees work for the company in more than 100 countries. Brabus specialized in tuning Mercedes-Benz cars right from the outset. More than 85% of the vehicles and conversions leave Germany after customization and mainly go to Asia, the USA, Russia, and the Gulf region. We work for an international clientele, chief executives, royalty, Formula One champions, the very famous, sometimes actors and sometimes pop stars on the U.S. charts. We never name names, of course, but one or two of our vehicles are owned by top celebrities, and this is, of course, what we do every single day. The construction of new vehicle parts is also among the daily tasks. Strict secrecy applies here. The initial stages of development take place in the catacombs of the plant. The design engineer prepares an ultra-modern 3D scanner. When a new vehicle model comes onto the market, the existing tuning kits, such as spoilers, bumpers, or wings, do not fit onto the new model. Therefore, new attachments have to be designed. Using the scanner, the tuners generate a digital model of the relevant vehicle parts. The virtual 3D copy then serves as a basis for the new design. This large number of dots in a row creates an optical line, and with the coupled motion, we visually get a flat surface. The light beam is emitted and recaptured by a receiver camera, which we can see here on the other side of the machine. And thanks to the acquisitions of the emitted light beams and the recaptured ones, we then obtain the correct distances of the scanned data. The 3D scanner measures the vehicle contours precisely to a hundredth of a millimeter, generating an exact digital image. The front part of the car is being scanned here for the design of a new front section. Scanning a complete vehicle would take up to two working days. The new 3D data of the front spoiler is processed in the development department. The new spoiler and additional air intakes need to fit to the front of the vehicle. For this reason, it's necessary to pay attention not only to the material properties, but also to safety aspects. The challenges are to be mindful of the manufacturing considerations for carbon fiber components. We also need to comply with TÜV, the technical inspectors, as well as statutory regulations to ensure that our products are authorized on public roads. 
Over the course of the company's 40 plus year history, the Bottrop designers have developed thousands of custom parts. The new components see the light of day in factory two. The master forms of the new parts are manufactured using 3D printers. Just now, three newly designed roof instrument holders are being printed out. The model builder cleans the blanks thoroughly with a sodium hydroxide solution. Using the sanitized prototypes, the model builders then construct a mold out of silicon. This is used to cast all future roof instrument holders. There are around 500 of the silicon blocks ready in the plastics production stores. The 10 employees in the workshop make numerous individual parts every day. Even the smallest plastic pieces are handcrafted. The mold for the roof instrument holders is sealed tightly before casting. Using a pneumatic stapler, the worker joins the upper and lower side of the mold together. It's important that no liquid plastic escapes later on. The silicon block is stored temporarily in a curing oven at a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, which will allow the liquid plastic to then spread out better in the preheated mold. The worker is now preparing the two-component compound. First of all, he weighs out the transparent hardener to the precise gram and puts it into the vacuum casting machine. The second component is also responsible for the color of the eventual roof instrument holder. The composition of both elements must be precise. Now, the materials engineer takes the silicon block from the curing oven and fits it with three filler hoses. He then also puts the finished mold into the casting machine. The two components bind to form polyurethane in the casting machine. The black resin provides excellent dimensional accuracy when casting high quality molded parts. To avoid the presence of abnormal cavities caused by air pockets in the finished workpiece, a strong underpressure is used in the machine. The casting process takes 15 minutes. After resting for a further 45 minutes in the curing oven, the silicon block is then opened. Depending on the material, the employee may repeat this process between 20 to 80 times after which the mold is no longer usable. The freshly molded vehicle parts are now taken out. The latest generation instrument holders still require further modification. The colleagues apply the finishing touches to the new parts. They are then painted and ready to be installed in the car. The 150,000 square meter tuning premises also include the engine department. Here in factory three, the high performance engines with up to 900 horsepower are created by hand. In the mechanical production facility, the necessary tuning parts are manufactured and finished by the employees. Prototype parts, standard parts, and development parts are processed and produced here. So now the largest part would be a crankcase and the smallest part a shim. In order to equip engines with more displacement, the mechanics fix the bare crankcases into a milling machine. This 12-cylinder engine will be used to power a limousine. During the milling operation, the diameter of its cylinders are enlarged by reboring more fuel can ultimately be combusted, and this means more power. 
The bore of the engine is being enlarged and the seating is being disassembled because we are also fitting crankshafts with greater stroke. A purely mechanical process, turning and milling. Before the work is carried out, the engine builders determine the exact position of the workpiece using a 3D measuring sensor and measure every individual cylinder precisely to a thousandth of a millimeter. Only the utmost precision guarantees a perfect final result. Meanwhile, a colleague loads the machine with the milling cutters, which cost up to 3,000 euros. Then, everything is ready to go. For one and a half hours, the machine works through the 12 cylinders of the aluminum crankcase. This enhances displacement from 6 to 7.3 liters, an increase of slightly more than 20%. The component then undergoes what is known as the honing procedure. In this process, the final hundredths of a millimeter in the cylinder are removed, creating a perfect surface. First, the specialist fits the torque plate. This distorts the block as if it were fully assembled, because when all the cylinder heads are mounted, the crankcase will warp. This tension is simulated by the torque plate. This is a honing tool, yet another very special piece of equipment here. It has diamond bars. We now have to hone out approximately four or five hundredths and hone cylindrically to ensure that everything works perfectly afterwards. Carefully, and then go. The honing tool set with diamonds rotates and simultaneously moves in and out of the cylinder. This enables the final hundredths of a millimeter to be removed. The engine expert measures repeatedly using the extremely accurate dial indicator and checks if the removed layer is still within the tolerance range. This calls for extensive experience and a trained eye. One mistake and the 15,000 euro engine block is ruined. After honing, the inner surface of each cylinder has the necessary cross grinding. This is what the oil film adheres to and allows the pistons to work with low friction. An employee verifies the finish quality using a microscope. The chief vehicle mechanic is looking for silicon. The semi-metal is crucial to ensure that the engine functions properly. Here we have a cylinder made from aluminum and silicon crystals, and now we're checking whether these silicon crystals are sufficiently exposed. That's the aluminum in the background. But that's just the aluminum. If both of the materials were on the same plane, the piston rings would jam. So that's why the silicon crystals, which are much harder than the aluminum, are exposed here. The fact that the piston and the piston rings only move on the silicon crystals means that the oil film can form nicely among the crystals, so everything is well lubricated. If the silicon relief were too shallow, the aluminum would have to be etched back so that the pistons don't jam in the engine later on. The high-end connecting rods are also manufactured on site. They too are weighed, like the motor pistons, to precisely a tenth of a gram. The employees then sort the individual components according to weight. All 12 piston rod pairs thus have the same mass. This is important for smooth and perfect running of the high-performance engine. This is distinct from large-scale production, where there is greater tolerance. The manufacturers of standard products are not interested in this because they see for themselves what kind of effort is involved in weighing everything first and matching everything up. We figure out the smallest possible tolerance and then further rework these parts, but this is the best way for this kind of engine. The connecting rods connect the pistons to the crankshaft. This too is a special component from the tuning workshop. The crankshaft converts the in and out motion of the pistons into torque. This rotary motion powers the car. 
Here we have our own crankshaft, which we developed ourselves. This now has greater stroke as opposed to stock. The connecting rod bearing stud, the middle is further apart from the main bearing stud compared to the production model. The piston takes a longer route as a result, ascending and descending the cylinder further. Owing to the larger cylinder diameter and the special crankshaft, the displacement of the 12 cylinders has increased by 1.3 liters. More displacement means greater performance. However, the critical thing here is not the final horsepower figure, but the increased torque. The high-performance tuning is rounded off by the company's own bi-turbo charger. Together with the increased displacement, this produces up to an additional 300 horsepower. The turbocharger is basically powered by the exhaust emissions. All the exhaust emissions from the engine pass through here. They then power the exhaust gas turbine at the rear. The axle turbine is on the same shaft, which compresses the air and forces it into the cylinder. And correspondingly, the engine receives more air and has greater performance as a result. A modified exhaust manifold and enlarged turbine wheels with specially shaped blades raise the efficiency of the turbocharger and thus ensure more power. The moment of truth has finally arrived. The performance of the unit is tested on the chassis dynamometer. Various load scenarios are run through at full throttle. To do this, the technician alters the resistance of the rollers. Different scenarios are created on the test bench, such as different gradients and slopes. We're looking to see if it actually attains the performance we specify here in the chassis dynamometer. In this case, 800 horsepower. To ensure that the 800 horsepower vehicles do not go through the wall, they are securely anchored to the floor. An oversized fan and two blowers provide a powerful wind and the supply of fresh air so that the engine and cooling system do not overheat during the sprint. This would result in an inaccurate measurement reading and possible engine damage. Next, we'll see if the car reaches its speed of 300 kilometers per hour by accelerating quickly to 300 from stationary. From 0 to 185 in 11 seconds, the tester is satisfied. Time was good, so it completed the test without incident, changes gears without any problem, threw all the gears up to seventh gear after 300 kilometers per hour, it's all good. It passed the test. The technician checks up to four vehicles every day. In the development phase, a prototype is on the test bench for up to 14 days. In contrast to Factory 3, there is a much slower pace in Factory 4. The Bottrop-based tuners also look after historic Mercedes-Benz vehicles. There is a dedicated area for this work. The Brabus Classic Department is both a showroom and a workshop. Here, the high-class vehicles are made to be as good as they were in their original condition. The restoration includes an effective anti-corrosion protection and a two-year warranty with unlimited kilometers. The total value of the classic cars on the premises, around 20 million euros. The hall also houses several examples of the 300 SL series. The distinctive gullwing from the 1950s is one of the most iconic vehicles around. Restoration on one of these involves several thousand working hours. It's worth the effort. The rare classics are sold for millions of euros. This 50-year-old Mercedes-Benz 280 SL Pagoda is also awaiting its revival. 
Restored Pagoda cars generally achieve market prices in excess of 100,000 euros. Virtually a bargain in the heated vintage vehicle market. The technical manager pays a visit before every reprocessing. He's looking for very specific pointers because not every vehicle is suitable for the ambitious revitalization process. Of course, at first sight, this car looks terrible. But if you look closely, this car has a sound basis for restoration because firstly, it has not been involved in an accident. And secondly, and very importantly, it has matching numbers, which means the car has many of its original components, such as the engine, gearbox, and for example, the bonnet. Here, for example, the last digit of the chassis number has been etched into the bonnet. Always important that such numbers match up because ultimately we want to have a car that's not only been brilliantly restored, but also has so-called matching numbers. The Bottrop team refers to the process of reinstating old-timers to their original as new condition as six-star restoration. The vehicle is admittedly past its best, but it has the original features it had when it came off the production line. You can see here the original welding points. Always a good indicator that this car has definitely not been involved in an accident. This is a very important criterion. The search for suitable base vehicles is a global one. The luxury restoration then takes between 12 and 18 months. Chassis, engine, gearbox, and interior. Every part, right up to the smallest piece of cable, is returned to its original condition. In the end, the 280 SL will have a price tag of nearly 300,000 euros. The assembly of classic cars, faithful to the original, is a supreme discipline. It demands very particular skills from the select employees. Today, young mechatronics engineers often lack the necessary skill for this specialized area. The apprentices can still learn a lot from the old school chief vehicle mechanics. These are not pressed cars. In other words, here we are working on vehicles that are handmade. You won't find two vehicles that are basically alike because this is work done by hand. You need to have a different level of know-how. Motor mechanics used to receive training to learn how to bore, saw, and file. This is no longer the case today. The mechanics in the Classics Motor Group are currently restoring an old gearbox. Master and pupil benefit from each other in unique ways. He, for example, comes from South Africa and doesn't speak any German. And I teach him German, and he teaches me all the tricks he has picked up over the years. Yeah, we're kind of complimenting one another. The final inspection of a fully restored classic car is a meticulous process. After so many months spent on the project, every detail needs to be perfect under the car as well. The color of the screws on the originally restored horn, the surface of the under seal, the color of the axle parts. Every cable must be laid correctly and be made with the original material. Quite simply, when a car leaves here, we're entitled to say, we have done everything, truly everything, right down to the final screw to present a perfect car. Factory one, back to the SUV, where the focus is on the interior. The employee strips out everything from the vehicle's interior one piece at a time. First, he removes the side panel from the driver's door. Then he dismantles all the seats. Afterwards, he brings the vehicle parts to the upholstery shop. The customer wants a fully upgraded interior. The bare car must now wait on the side for four to five weeks. More than 20 specialists work in the company's upholstery shop. The new seat covers and trims for dashboards, doors, and headlining are custom made by hand and as per the customer's request. In the case of a complete installation, it's not only the visible parts that are upgraded, but also the interiors of the glove compartment and the various shelves, plus a completely new floor.
The upholsterers use either elk leather, ostrich leather, mastic, or nubuck leather for the luxury finish. Around 3,500 different shades are available for the interior, all embellished with decorative seams and artistically embroidered patterns. First of all, the employees take apart the seats and remove them from the original supports. Modern car seats provide even greater comfort and therefore have complex inner workings. In addition to the electric seat adjustment, there's aircon, automatic headrests, and massage functions, just to name a few. The challenge is to have all the functions working again as soon as we mount the seat cover back. For example, the challenge with the seat climate system that we connect is to connect the seat heating mat back so that all the functions are displayed without anything missing or damaged. The interior fitter needs around 30 minutes to take apart the seat. The cover is then off and ready for the next step. In the meantime, his colleague has already prepared the back seat. A complicated task lies ahead for her. This is the old cover, and I'm using this to make a template, because this customer wants it just as it is, stitched together here, but with an additional tuck. A tuck is a purely decorative seam, small but beautiful. The tricky part is here on the curve. If you don't follow this curved line here in the right way, you lose the piping. It's not where it should be, gone, and you have to throw the part away. The employee separates the entire back seat cover. Then she trims the leather for the new seam. A special sewing foot and a special needle are required to do the job. The sewer takes two working days for the exclusive embellishment. Even the floor mats are customized by the car tuners. The finest materials, a large variety of patterns for quilting seams, the incorporation of logos, and even LED lights turn plain accessories into exclusive custom-made products. The upholstery shop is state-of-the-art. A computer-controlled sewing machine produces the elaborate decorative seams. The sewing head can rotate 360 degrees and accurately sew more than 150 different patterns in all kinds of leather. However, the final result is only as good as the raw material. Important for the tuners in the Ruhr Valley is high quality leather. The surface should be natural, soft and breathable. The grain pattern has occurred naturally and has not been engraved as is commonplace in mass production. With standard leather, we have an evenly applied grain pattern which is fully covered with a coating, the leather. With our leather, you can see that the leather changes greatly from the center to the edge, reflecting the natural aspect of the skin. You can even still see nicks and injuries in the skin. The cow doesn't live alone in the cow shed. At some point they come up against each other, they do have horns after all, and they also have insect bites and scars in their skin. So when we use our leather in-house in the vehicles, we obviously cannot use these sections. Therefore, we actually cut more from the center of the skin, which has a high waste factor. So here we have an entire cow that is around 5 square meters in size. If we were to cover an entire vehicle interior, we would need 100 square meters, that is, 20 cows, which we then process. This comes at a cost. A complete redesign of the interior can cost more than 40,000 euros. In order to be able to process the material as precisely as possible, the upholsterer sprays the component with a two-compound adhesive. After two hours of drying, the adhesive can be reactivated at any time. The process enables the employee to put the leather in the exact position before initiating the adhesion process with the hot air gun. 
The upholsterer must ensure that no waves or bubbles develop. Once the final excess leather has been removed, the component is upholstered. These small plastic parts from the interior part of an SUV were once beige. The handles, switches, covers, and faceplates have been painted olive green at the customer's request. The technician now reassembles each individual part. Not only does this require great concentration and patience, but it also takes a lot of time. It takes a day to assemble all these parts we have here. There are 123 individual parts from the G-Class, and it will take a bit more time until everything has been reinstalled. Depending on just what is involved, it can take three or four days. This overhead control panel is operational again in a different color. As is the driver's seat, too. It goes through the final inspection after two and a half working days. It can now be returned to the customer in a new color. With special perforations in the seats and backrest, red seams, an embossed leather strip, and stitched logos. Bit by bit, the mechanic puts the converted interior back into the SUV. The newly covered door trim is mounted on the vehicle. The employee must ensure that all technical functions, such as electric windows, central locking, audio boxes, and lights are working perfectly. Cables must not slip or get damaged. Then he attaches the multifunctional steering wheel with a new leather trim. This SUV is also getting one further extravagant visual attraction. 500 optical fibers protruding from the roof liner with one purpose. A red starry sky is to shine over the passengers. Cost, just under 20,000 euros. The fitter has taken a day and a half to cover the roof interior with Alcantara and installed the 500 fiber optics in precision work over many hours. Now he pinches off each one individually to reveal luminous stars in the car roof liner. As it say, it's imposter. It'll be sitting there for a few hours working on cutting everything to length. The team needs five weeks for a complete interior overhaul. Such bespoke orders are routine for the tuning pros. Very little can still surprise them. One customer wanted ostrich leather. Ostrich is rather limited in terms of its shape and size. You need a few of these skins to do an interior. But there was more to the special request. It didn't only have to be red ostrich leather, but also red carbon inside and the car matte black on the outside. Very unusual indeed. But we get this sort of thing daily. This is how we make our living. After six months, the total overhaul of the SUV is done. Its transformation to the Brabus 800 is complete. Finally, the highly tuned vehicles are driven to the inspection. The quality inspector will spot every error. The newly fitted brake calipers receive particular attention. This is of vital importance, not only for the customer, but also for the inspector because he's about to put the pedal to the metal for the first test drive. Just checking here to see if the cabling, and in particular this brake caliper that we have painted are tight, and then we're not losing any hydraulic fluid here. Because otherwise, we'd have a problem not having any brakes in the test drive. Not something you want, of course, for a vehicle of this kind with so much power. In the case of large-scale conversions, the quality inspector will manage no more than one final inspection in a day. The check is too extensive and detailed. His trained eye is now focused on the hull. 
The paint has to be unblemished and the clearance is uniform. He pays particular attention to the forged rims. In the case of a five-figure sum for a set of new tires, there is zero tolerance. I'm kind of like the eye of the customer. I'm looking as the customer would be looking. Next, he gets to work on the interior. Every individual function in the vehicle is tested by him. Door locks, seat belts, headrests, storage compartments. The expert feels his way, looking, touching, and listening. Constantly on the lookout for any minor defects or faults. All his senses are needed for the quality control. Yeah, in fact, you can hear or sense if the motors are working. The quality inspector will need to look and touch the vehicle hundreds of times before he starts the test drive. After the final function tests, he drives the high-end vehicle onto the test track. This is located on the adjacent tuning premises. The helipad serves as the location for an initial endurance test. Where the super rich normally land is where the severe test begins for the tuned vehicle. We are now at the roundabout and here we are checking to see if the chassis drifts or bends somewhere. From the roundabout, it's taken directly over to the cobblestone track. The car is well and truly shaken and bumped around. Now the suspension has to demonstrate what it's capable of and the inspector listens to see if all the vehicle parts are tight and secure. Then the 800 horsepower vehicle speeds over the sinus wave track. The heavyweight must not drift here either. Slam on the brakes. A big turn and return to the home straight when kickdown is activated. And then back. The SUV flexes its muscles on the test track. As you've noticed, the vehicle is tremendously powerful. If, as I said before, you really put your foot down, it can start to spin. You have to be careful when driving such a vehicle. This car has been inspected and approved and is now ready for delivery. But before loading, it will be washed by hand. The cleaning technician has an array of car care products on hand to make the luxury model gleam after its test drive. Here we have a calcium remover, windscreen cleaner, liquid polish, rim cleaner, insect remover, and car shampoo. The Bottrop team washes the vehicle by hand. The experienced employee proceeds with great care. They can't afford any scratches to the paintwork this close to delivery. I wash around 10 to 15 cars a day. It just depends on how busy it is. One millimeter at a time, he cleans the exterior and the interior using a sponge, high pressure washer and polishing cloth. He needs one hour for the extensive cleaning. Then the Brabus 800 can leave the workshop. The luxury car is, however, not driven to its owner. To make sure that it reaches its final destination undamaged, it's loaded onto a transporter belonging to the company. The truck has space for two vehicles. Once the SUV is secured, the journey can begin by land to the nearest port or to an airport, and from there to anywhere in the world. <laughs>